Hello there, folks. I'm not saying it was aliens, but it was aliens. Just wanted to mention, just in passing, that two things, well, a lot of things have helped me get through the pandemic so far. And two of those things are the book I Am That by Nisargadatta Maharaj that I keep referencing. And the other thing is the TV show Ancient Aliens. <laughs> I love this show. It's such a hoot. Uh, I don't uh, I, I don't think it was really aliens in most cases, but I, I love that show. And that's my recommendation for you. The main thing I wanted to talk about today, though, was Colbin Chino's One Bright Pearl. And I had this feeling that I had mentioned this on a previous video, and maybe I have, but I just kind of scrolled through the last three or four videos I made, and I couldn't find any mention of this. Although in my mind I mentioned it, but uh, so you guys can tell me whether I've told you this story already or not. But I was reading Cobancino's book, Embracing Mind. Uh, Cobancino is the teacher of my first Zen teacher, and uh, you know, there's only one book, well, one book of his teachings out there, and it's called Embracing Mind. It's really good. And near the end of a chapter about pain, which I know I talked about on this video channel when I mentioned that when I hit, when I touch the stick to the floor, the stick in the floor feel pain. At the end of that chapter, Coben tells his version of the story of One Bright Pearl. And this is a story I think I've referenced on this video channel more than once. And it's a story I really like. I've written about it in, in at least one book, maybe more than one book. I think I've written about it in Sit Down and Shut Up and Don't Be a Jerk. But here's another version of it, and, and Coben's version of it is kind of interesting because it's different from the, the version that Dogen tells. And here, he, here it is. There is a story about one of Seppo's disciples whose father was a fisherman in the Yangtze River, and this young man was his helper. Every day they caught a huge carp or something in the big river. One night the moon was bright, so they set up night fishing, but the father slipped and went into the water. Maybe a big fish caught the hook and pulled him down. So he was drowning from the slippery river bank. The son tried to save him and threw out his bamboo poles and fishing tackles trying to save his father until he himself was slipping, so finally he had to let go of the poles and his father sank in the moonlight. The son's mind was kind of screwed up at that moment, and he ran to the monastery of Seppo, Snow Peak Seppo Gisan. It's an old Zen teacher, a very famous Rinzai teacher. After years of practice with Seppo, the disciple, whose name was Gensha, told Seppo, I'm no good, I must go away from this place. So he began to climb the mountain until, in the dark, he kicked a sharp rock. When he held on to his toes, they felt warm and yucky. Oh no, it hurts, he said to himself. This body and mind do not exist, I know, but where is this pain coming from? He sat there thinking, wait a minute, what did I say? So he started to climb back down the path, back to Master Snow Peak. I was wrong, so I came back, he said. When the master asked him why he had returned, he answered, Bodhidharma hasn't come to China, the second patriarch hasn't gone to India. This was a strange statement, since Bodhidharma came to China, everyone knew that, and Hueco, the second patriarch, had gone to India. What he meant was that Bodhidharma didn't need to come to China, and Huiko didn't need to go to India. Seppo recognized something underneath this statement, so Gensha stayed there in Kosei, west of the Yangtze, and taught many people, maintaining that this universe is nothing but a bundle of light. And then Coben adds, pain is sometimes a good thing, you know. Now the version that Dogen tells is called One Bright Pearl, and instead of saying the universe is nothing but a bundle of light, he says the universe is one bright pearl. I think maybe this is Coben just kind of remembering it the way he remembered it and then speaking it out in English and, and making that mistake. But it's a really nice mistake because it really is uh, lovely. And the version that Dogen tells doesn't include the thing about Gensha's father dying. I, I don't know where that comes from. It probably comes from some other version of the koan. But what Dogen says at the end of his commentary on One Bright Pearl is this, and it's, I think, one of the most profound and wonderful statements in all of Dogen's work. The mind is not personal. Why should we be worried by attachment to whether it is a bright pearl or is not a bright pearl? as if what arises and passes were some person. Even thinking and worry is not different from the bright pearl. No action nor any thought has ever been caused by anything other than the bright pearl. Therefore, forward steps and backward steps in a demon's black mountain cave 
are just the one bright pearl itself. Now that forward steps and backward steps in a demon's cave has to do with a, a later part of the story in which uh, somebody is trying to demonstrate their understanding of the koan one bright pearl and his teacher says you're taking steps into the uh, was it a, a demon's black mountain cave but dogen after mentioning that and talking about the black mountain cave says well don't worry forward steps and backward steps in a black mountain cave are just the one bright pearl itself so now no matter what you do the the bright pearl is still the bright pearl the universe is still the universe you are still you and your connection with the universe is still as intimate as it ever was now the thing i was trying to write about today that i was sort of i, I came to do this video came outside and uh, because i was just kind of getting stuck was uh, this line the mind is not personal now most of us would think of the mind as being the most personal thing there is. Like, uh, let's see, what did I write? Our, th our thoughts are our own and nobody else's. Nobody knows what I'm thinking unless I deliberately tell them. Well, maybe I, that's not entirely true. I might make a Freudian slip and accidentally say something that lets people know what I'm secretly thinking, or my facial expression could announce my unspoken thoughts. Still, even so, I, I, that sort of thing can't reveal everything I'm thinking. So thinking and, and, and the mind is considered by most people to be the most intimate and personal thing there is. Yet Dogen says here, and he says it all over his works, and Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj, who I mentioned, who wrote that book, uh, or whose who, who students compiled that book, I Am That, about his teachings, uh, and a lot of other people say the mind is not personal. And when you do zazen, you can sometimes sink into this feeling. You can sometimes get a sense of what this means to say the mind is not personal. Because you think that you generate your own thoughts, and to a certain extent that's true. Uh, Comet TV was showing Godzilla vs. Megalon uh, the other night, and I DVR'd it. Because <laughs> uh, this, this thing I got now has a DVR. It was a maze. I didn't know. Never used one before. But anyway, I was thinking, like, I could draw to mind the movie Godzilla vs. Megalon, because it's probably, it's not, it's become my favorite Godzilla movie over the years in a way, but it, most, most Godzilla fans hate it, but it was the one that Channel 43 showed the most often on Superhost show, so, so it's the one Godzilla movie I've probably seen more than any other, and I, I should be able to remember it perfectly, but I can't, you know, or I can think about my sister's dogs, you know, she's got these uh, pit bulls, and the pit bulls are really good friends with this little black cat that she got, and it's really cute when they cuddle together and stuff, you know, so I can deliberately generate certain thoughts but most of the time my thoughts are are not under my control the the control of me you know because there's all sorts of thoughts that I have that I don't want to have uh, especially during this pandemic and stuff when everybody's all panicky and I you know things arise to mind especially in the middle of the night that I don't want to think about uh, so you don't have total control over the mind so you can't say that it is the possession of of me uh, and besides that, the, the things that come into the mind don't seem to be absolutely related to what I think of as me, my personality. In fact, one of the things I discovered during Zazen was that, that something I do often, uh, constantly, is I try to take the thoughts that appear in my mind and judge them as good or bad in terms of how they fit into the personality that I think I am and have or should be. So if I get a lot of bad thoughts, I'll start having doubts about my, my personality or who I am. You know, and if I have a lot of good thoughts, I might feel elated about myself. But most of the time, it's not under a kind of conscious control. It's just a flow of things that that come through this space. And what I am seems to be something that's even deeper than that. That's something that experiences that and watches it happen but isn't it. And it, it isn't this body either, because this, this body, as Dogen says, flows through the months and years, and where have the red faces of our youth gone? I think that's in Bendoa, or maybe it's in Genjo Koan. It's one of his early writings. And he clearly says that the body is not myself, and the mind is not myself. So what is myself? That's the question. And to me, one of the most useful things you can do during Zazen is kind of keep that question 
going. It doesn't mean you have to constantly repeat it to yourself or anything like that, but keep doing what Dogen says, which is turn the light backwards and shine it inwards uh, to see where where all of this is coming from instead of illuminating the outside and going oh look at that and 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 imagining a perspective that is me that is looking at that and experiencing that uh, look at what is looking at that it's not easy to do always but it's it's really useful so that's a little short bit and now I'm going to go back to writing. If you want to support my writing career you can send a donation to the link that you see below on the screen and if you're watching on YouTube I have direct links to my Patreon account and PayPal account. That's how I get paid. As I've been saying ever since February or March or whenever the pandemic started happening don't sweat it if you can't send me a donation because I don't want to be one of those people who's like asking for donations from people who don't have it. Uh, but that is the way I'm keeping going, and I really, really thank all of you who are continuing to support me, even though I'm not making a lot of videos, and I was told not to apologize for that, so I'm not going to apologize for that, but I'm sorry. Oop. Anyway, uh, see you next time, and have a good time all the time. I'm not saying it was aliens, but it was aliens. Bye.